The World Health Organization has just recently confirmed the death of a young Indonesian girl blaming bird flu. Since 2003, bird flu has killed 164 people and infected hundreds more. Now, researchers in Indiana have devised a computer-simulated model that predicts how an emerging influenza pandemic might spread across the globe by air travel. More importantly, the model also looks at how to contain it. Joining us now from Bloomington, Indiana, with more uh, is one of the researchers, Vittoria Kolitsa. Vittoria, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Travel restrictions, which we have you know, been working on so diligently, um, did little to stop the spread of this simulated pandemic. Why is that? Um, the results of our simulations show that even large travel restrictions like 50%, reducing 50% or 70% of the traffic uh, wouldn't be able to contain the pandemic within the source or, or mitigate the pandemic either. The problem is that anyway, people could be allowed to travel and could, be, uh, could bring uh, carry the disease uh, from one uh, geographic zone to the other, then starting a new outbreak uh, in a different geographic zone. So what did stop it? Uh, basically, uh, we showed that uh, the use of uh, antiviral drugs, which would be the only measure at the beginning uh, during the first few months uh, since uh, while we are waiting for the development of an appropriate vaccine. Yeah. So AV drugs would be very efficient in delaying the pandemic peak and also mitigating the impact that the pandemic would have on the population. So basically reducing, strongly reducing the number of sick people. So the conclusion being we should start making these vaccines or researching more effective vaccines immediately. No, not vaccine, but antiviral drugs. Sorry, yes. So the, 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 the vaccine would be developed once the virus has emerged. Right. Because it needs to be appropriate for that virus. But AV, we already have AV drugs, and already some countries are stockpiling on AV drugs. And that would be extremely important to do that. But our results actually show that the reason, uh, the, the, the more efficient, uh, most efficient strategy would be to uh, have a, a, a cooperative uh, um, strategy intervention in which uh, uh, countries, wealthy countries which are stockpiling on AV drugs would uh, um, donate part of their resources for a global benefit. So, so it is, it's to the benefit of those nations, wealthier nations that are stockpiling these antiviral drugs, it's, it's to their benefit to share them. It's for the benefit of all. So it's yeah. for the benefit of not only of the recipient countries, but also for the donors. So what we, the, the results show that uh, the pandemic would have a little uh, effect, um, um, a smaller impact also on the countries which donate the AV drugs, the medicines. So do you take this research now and, and do, you, uh, do you give it to the World Health Organization? Uh, well, it's it's not that easy. Let's say we. Uh, I'd be very glad, of course, to present my results uh, yeah. to the organization, and uh, uh, and I, and I, I believe that these kind of uh, simulations are important scientific tools that can be used in order to provide some insight on what uh, intervention should be taken into account, considered, and how to manage it. Victoria, how bad did it get in your simulation? It did, I mean, did it? You know, particularly, I'm thinking now. You know, Canada and the United States. Just, just how bad did it get? Well, if, for example, nobody intervenes uh, at, at, at any level, from the individual to the country level, it could also uh, infect uh, half of the population. Wow. That is scary stuff. Well, That's thank you very, thank you very much uh, for sharing your conclusions with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Coming up, why are Manitoba residents cheering for the Chicago Bears and Sunday Super Bowl? We'll have a Canadian connection for you coming up.